Hi friends, welcome back. Thank you for the next installment of, thank you for joining me for the next installment of uh, the Archetypes and Elements series. For those of you who have uh, uh, visited my channel before, thank you for coming, welcome back. For those of you who are new, thanks for tuning in. Today we're gonna be looking at the artist archetype. So these archetype cards come from Carolyn Mace and they're based on the work she did in her book, Sacred Contracts. So I encourage you to check that out to get a, a deeper insight on this concept. But um, each of these archetypes has a light attribute and a shadow attribute. So the light attributes of the artist are expressing a dimension of life that is just beyond the five senses and inspiring others to see life symbolically. In the shadow attributes, um, an artist uh, uses their talent as an excuse to mistreat others, or they might pose as the starving artist to elicit pity. Um, let me read a little bit from the, the guidebook about this archetype. So um, some of the other ways the artist architect archetype can manifest is as an artisan, craftsperson, photographer, sculptor, or weaver. So if any of those occupations apply to you, you might consider that the artist may be one of your intimate 12 archetypes. Um, there's other art forms available too, like a chef or a landscaper could also be considered an artist. I'd like to argue that a tarot card reader could be considered an artist in a way, practicing the art of divination and interpreting symbols. Um, another way that this archetype can manifest is if you are a supporter of, of local artists and helping to counteract that starving artist syndrome. So um, if you feel a, a a call to be dedicated and support the arts, then the artist archetype might apply to you as well. Um, let's see, so, oh, one other thing I did wanna mention is um, that, um, and the signature of the artist is not in what they do, but in how intense their motivation is to manifest the extraordinary. And an artist also creates an emotional field that inspires others. Um, and just an, another thing about the starving artist syndrome. So if you're not familiar with what that means, uh, the starving artist is, comes either comes to financial ruin or they hold the belief that fame and fortune are going to come only after death, which sadly, you know, probably has happened to many artists in the past. They're not supported in life and then in death, their work becomes famous. So um, it's important to support your local artist. Um, and again, dedicating part of the energy of your life to supporting artists can be um, one way to manifest the, ar the artist archetype in your own life. So let's go ahead and dig into the reading. If this is your first time to my channel, you might wanna go and check out my video on the introduction to the Archetypes and Elements series. It sort of explains a little bit more about this spread. Um, and uh, if you do like these readings, please, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. Okay, so let's go ahead and dig in. So the, the piles down here represent the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. Um, so we're gonna look at how those different elements might play into the artist, the artist archetype in your life. Um, and the idea is that as we explore these archetypes together, you might identify 12 of the archetypes that apply to your intimate team of archetypes that are here to help you um, to fulfill your soul contract here on Earth. So let's start with the pile uh, for Earth. And first, I'm just going to run through 
all the elemental cards and then we'll dig into the meanings and interpretations after we look at them all. So first we have card number, uh, sorry, that's a two. Card number two, Sunflower Queen. And this is from the Working with the Elements Oracle deck by Colin Hall. Um, and then we have from the Sailor Jerry playing cards, the Six of Pentacles. From the Antique Anatomy Tarot, we again have the Six of Coins. From the Wildwood Tarot, oh my goodness, the Six of Stones, Exploitation. And from the Rider Waite, we have the Knight of Pentacles. Whew. Wow, three of the Six of Pentacles, interesting. Okay, so then from the Element of Air, we have Card number six, again, six might be an important number. Storm spirits. Um, from Sailor Jerry's deck, we have the Three of Swords. From the Antique Anatomy, we have the Two of Blades. Um, from the Wildwood Tarot, the Eight of Arrows, Struggle. And from the traditional Rider Waite Tarot, we have the Four of Swords. Ooh. Oof. <laughs> All right. So from the Fire Pile, we have card number eight, Red Angel. We have the Jack of Clubs, the Five of Rods, the Two of Bows, Decision, oh, and Two of Wands again. And then from the element of water, we have, oh my goodness, Broken Heart, W9. Two of Hearts. Four of Elixirs. Knight of Vessels, the Eel, and the Seven of Cups. Okay. So, Six of Pentacles three times. Pretty significant. Um, the number six represents love um but it can also represent like exploitation and that devil energy um being beholden to somebody so i think that this is both a, a warning and a message um to make sure that if the artist archetype does apply to you that you're not being exploited by others, that you're not using your art to exploit others, and that um, there's a balance between giving and taking, that you're getting what you're worth. It's funny because the, the Rider Waite version of this did not show up, but in the Rider Waite version, there's a picture of a man handing out coins to beggars. And you can see the beggars here and the, the Six of Stones exploitation. So getting that starving artist vibe. So I think it's a lesson for those of 
us who um, haven't completely um, dived into the artist lifestyle as an artist to be sure that we're supporting the artists who bring beauty and inspiration into our lives. Okay. And then the Knight of Pentacles is about moving forward, making solid financial decisions. So I do think that uh, there's a message here coming through that um, if the artist archetype does apply to your intimate 12, you want to make sure that you plan carefully for your future and and still um, hold on to the practical things, the pragmatic things in life. Don't let go of that. Um, there's a tendency for artists to sometimes slip into eccentricity. So th the Knight of Pentacles is reminding us to stay grounded in reality. I'm going to read a little bit from the Ancient Anatomy Tarot book and from the Wildwood Tarot about this uh, six energy here, six of earth energy. So from the Six of Coins, it says, take a penny, leave a penny. If you are in need, someone will give you what is lacking. If someone else is in need, it is up to you to do the giving. There are lessons to be learned from the extreme greed of the Four of Coins and the extreme poverty of the Five of Coins. The Six of Coins is also about receiving money that you are owed. This can be from expected sources perhaps an outstanding invoice, or from unexpected places. Maybe you've been overpaying your electric bill and are sent a refund. And keywords include generosity, sharing, charity, gratitude, blessings, and bonus. So there's sort of some encouragement there to be creative about finding additional sources of income to help you get by. Um, Okay, let me read from the Wildwood Tarot about the Six of Stones. Let's see if there's anything, any special lessons that apply here. Yeah, it's, it's basically just talking about how um, selfish or foolish overuse of non-sustainable resources implies imbalance in work or business that is damaging to yourself or the environment. So um, just encouraging us to all make sustainable use of our resources, and that applies in our art as well as regular life. Um, so for the element of air, oh wait, hold on. Sorry, I forgot. I want to read about the Sunflower Queen too. And this is card number two of Earth. The beauty of the Sunflower Queen's aura is flowing in every direction. She is very rarely seen, endlessly carrying out her duties. She is very much connected to the geometric angel who builds form, all the time receiving and distributing her power to crops. She is a teacher who works on a very high vibration when you go deep in meditation, you will connect with building and geometric angels. Um, affirmation, like the sunflower, I will follow the light. 
There's a lot of reference to geometry in this card, so I know that that is important to artists. Okay, let's dig into the air pile. So there's a lot of tough energy here. Okay. Um, we have the Three of Swords, which represents heartache and loss, betrayal. Um, the Two of Blades, which is about silence and needing to find balance. Um, about blockages in our way. And there's the Eight of Arrows for struggle. Um, needing to look within for answers, feeling all alone. And then there's the Four of Swords, which is also about solitude and silence and rest and healing. So out of these, it's probably the most positive card we've got. But I think that, um, I think this makes sense. I, I think perhaps um, the purpose of an artist is partly to explore all of these difficult themes that each of us go through in life and to help us to overcome them. And then the artist themselves is going to be faced with these difficulties. This could even be representing artist block, you know, that with the two of swords and the four of swords energy, um, and then the eight of swords meaning being stuck, meaning struggle. So maybe the way to overcome those blocks is to take some time out to rest and heal from time to time, to heal from your wounds of the three of swords as well. I imagine that there's times that, you know, an artist feels betrayed after they've put so much hard work into their, um, into their art and then not seeing it pay off. Let's read about the storm spirits. And I think this is another kind of difficult energy, but there's healing here too. Let's see, so air, and this is the six of air. So storm spirits. On the card are two people, male and female, representing the positive and the negative. Just like our emotions as we go through life, we can be like a storm or as still as a cloud. This is the time to look in on our positive side in the higher mind. On this card, this is represented by the female rising above the negative and the determination to quell the storm and bring back the peace in our lives. On the moon is the symbol of Om, a spiritual sound of peace carried on the wind. Suggestion, try to understand the symbols of the air. Look into the clouds. Affirmation, I am ready for the wind of change in my life. Yeah, so I really think that sums up the stack. Um, you know, life is about difficult emotions. Even though the swords don't really represent emotion, I mean, the three of swords is about heartache. That it, it's about piercing the heart. So I do think that the that the this is an emotional pile, considering that it's all swords and. Um, and some of these emotions are negative and the artist's job is to explore those emotions, both the negative and the positive and to help us all reach to a higher level through the use of symbolism. Okay, 
so let's look at the stack representing fire. So here we had the two of bows come up twice, two of rods, two of wands, whatever you want to call it. So this is about decisions, making decisions, deciding which path to take. Um, in the Rider weight version, it can also be about sort of looking at the big picture, taking, taking a, a global perspective. Um, taking the high route. And then the five of rods is usually about, um, it can be about competition, confusion and conflict, but also creativity. These orange flowers can represent creativity and playfulness. That's the positive aspect of the five of rods is it's about being playful and not taking things too seriously. And then the jack of clubs is about adventure, um, questing, you know, life's an adventure, embracing that journey. Let's get some more messages about the two of wands. Basically, um, in the Wildwood Tarot, um, this depiction is showing a gateway open before the individual, prepared to take positive action. And um, it's about harnessing um, your, uh, your skills and your latent energy and directing your power um, towards its full potential. Okay. So that's an important thing, harnessing that energy. Um, let me just see if there's any more information on the five of rods that I want to share. Yeah, and so the, with the five of rods, I'm kind of getting like a fake it till you make it type of energy <laughs> from here too. Um, it says, uh, sometimes the five of rods can indicate that the people around you do not have your best interests at heart. They have their own agendas and unfortunately they involve taking you down. <laughs> oh, hopefully not that harsh, but you know, Sometimes people get their own agendas in their head and they're thinking about themselves and not others. That's how I would put it. But um, it says here, stand firm and appear strong even if you don't feel like it. And it's also about overcoming obstacles. So uh, I think that this is encouragement to just, you know, stick with it, keep your head, keep your chin up, keep fighting for what you want to do with your life. Um, and and uh, learn how to harness your energy in the direction that you want things to go. All right, so let's read the Red Angel, card number eight. Eight of Fire. The red angel is the card for power. 
She moves all obstacles that are in our way. That We were just talking about obstacles with the five of rods. Um, she is the angel that comes in our darkest hour. One of her wings is removing the bars from the door. The other wing is her protection. The symbol of the word Om is being transmitted through the air like a music note, bringing harmony back into our lives. Again, the word Om came up. That's interesting too. Suggestion, remove any obstacles that stop us growing spiritually and from becoming a free spirit. Affirmation, my pathway has no end. Wow, so there's a lot of encouragement here to just be prepared to deal with obstacles, remove them. You might look into um, Ganesh and uh, his story because he helps to remove obstacles. That makes sense. I mean, artists have a lot of obstacles in their way and you can't be afraid of those. You have to be prepared to deal with them if, if that's what you want to do with your life. So for water, we've got the broken heart. We'll look into that in a little bit. And you know, the broken heart also ties in with that three of swords, that energy that we had earlier. Um, we also have the two of cups which is about attraction and partnership. We've got the four of elixirs, which can be about apathy and boredom and um, not always accepting the first offer, sort of waiting for the right inspiration to hit you. Um, the Knight of Vessels, who's, I kind of think of the Knight of Vessels as a poet, you know, he's like the kind of guy who serenades the ladies. Um, and then we have um, uh, Seven of Cups, which is about illusion and mystery, um, dreams, fantasy. So, from the artist archetype, I'm actually seeing this as a pretty positive card in like exploring your dreams and fantasies and looking to those for inspiration. All right, let's see what else um, the book says about the Knight of Vessels. I think there might be more to it. Well, it's interesting too because some of the Knight of Vessels meanings tie in with the Two of Cups as well. Attraction, conquest, seduction, a welcoming, compliance, agreement, induction, coming together, union, and arrival. Discovering how to merge with a concept or find a chord with a person. Um, fantasy and introspection. Your deep feelings are expressed at every turn. Yeah, and as a person in your life, or it could represent you as well, the Knight of Vessels is a charming, cultured, and gallant person sensitive and imaginative he takes dreams seriously he runs on a high emotional current as a friend or lover he is attractive and congenial to be with exploring the shores of love and friendship imaginatively he can be a seductive smooth talker who plays the field or an addictive personality who plums the depths of his own fantasies yeah, so I definitely see that tie in here with the seven of cups and just sort of being willing to take that dive into your fantasies. You, you, you need to go there as an artist to explore that part of life. And also I think that you know, the two of cups can, in a business sense for the artist mean, you know, forming good relationships with the people who are 
supporting your art. I think that's important as well. And not just accepting any offer that comes along the Four of Elixirs. Let's see if there's anything else in the Four of Elixirs. Yeah, this can rep also represent apathy or being in a rut. So with that four energy, again, it's sort of like that writer's block or, you know, artist block when you're feeling like a little low on inspiration. Um, so yeah, m there may be a need to rest and just kind of focus on your dreams when that sort of thing happens. All right, let's read about the broken heart. The heart is split in two, and the water lily has no grounding, being carried away by the river of emotion. The angel near the fire is the symbol of the phoenix rising from the fire. The crystals are for the clarity and understanding to return in our lives. Suggestion, trust your feelings and live in harmony with them. Affirmation, like the phoenix, I will reach new heights. Okay. So when you're feeling carried away by the river of emotion, uh, you know, that happens sometimes, but you just need to take a pause, find some clarity, and rise like the phoenix. Okay, so let's see what we have from the goddess uh, inspiration oracle. We have Gaia, you can create your life. Envision what you desire it to be. That's Mother Earth. Okay. And then we have from the um, Gods and Titans, the Green Man, Abundance. So those are some strong Earth energies, maybe looking to nature for inspiration. Some guidance we're getting here. Now let's look at the major arcana that we pulled. So we have the hermit, the shaman, and the fool. I think that's interesting because these are, all three of these are kind of like solitary men out on a journey. Um, the shaman is like the magician card. Um, so it's about going within, uh, tapping into the divine, bringing that divine into the material world, seeking divine inspiration. And with the fool, it's about, you know, fearlessly uh, moving forward with your dreams, for better or for worse, taking that leap of faith. Because if the artist is your archetype, that's what you were here, brought here to do. All right, so thank you all for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. Um, our next session will cover the athlete archetype, so please stay tuned. And um, I hope you have a great day. Thank you, bye.